Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, parents, and hopefully some grandparents are joining us at home as well. Well, this is our last chapel of 2020, but it's also a special Christmas chapel. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning that we can worship together, that we can focus on you. Jesus is indeed the reason for the season. We are celebrating this special occasion every year because of your son, Jesus Christ, who loved us and come to this world. And you show us the greatest gift that for mankind. And we ask that uh, you will just bless this service today and lift our heart and spirit as we celebrate together the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, so good to have all of you joining us. Wow, praise team and worship team will lead us in some singing, and then we'll, uh, that will follow by a special number by Mr. Lee, our music teacher. I think that will bless your heart. Thank you, and let's enjoy worship together.
All right, so good to have that special worship time. And uh, now we have a special message, Christmas message from Pastor Toby Yuan. Of course, Pastor Toby is no stranger to all of us. He is the youth pastor of our Bay Area Chinese Bible Church. More importantly, he works so closely with many of our students, you know, in, especially in middle school worship and in our K-8 worship as well. And uh, so we're so glad, Pastor Toby, that you will be sharing God's word with us today. Good morning, students, and welcome to chapel. As you can see, this is a very special chapel service because we are here today to celebrate Christmas. All right, the birth of Jesus Christ. We are here today to, to magnify and to talk about, think about this Christmas season or Christmas, as I like to call it. The birth of our son, Jesus Christ, who was born on that O Holy Night that we just sung about. You know, I love the Christmas season. I love getting all cozied up and, and warm. I, lo I love snuggling up with blankets. I, I love um, sleeping on nice soft pillows. I love sipping on hot chocolate, eating cinnamon rolls, and getting dressed up in my ninja monkey onesie that you see me wearing right now. I love to be comfy and cozy. I love to be warm. That's what Christmas means to me many times. It's so comforting to be wrapped up in the warmth of our homes, to be surrounded by friends and family and delicious meals and good food. I love all those things about Christmas. I love the smell of, of, of Christmas trees, or actually, no, no, I don't. To be truthful, uh, my family, we have fake trees, so I love the smell of my fake plastic tree. Um, but Christmas overall is typically a very comfy and cozy holiday. But it wasn't always that way. Especially that very first Christmas on Jesus' birthday, when he was born, nothing was safe. Nothing was comfortable. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Jesus' birthday is unique because of how unsafe his birthday was. In fact, I don't know of any other birth in the history of mankind that's been surrounded by more danger than Jesus' birth. Today, I want to talk to you guys and share with you all the Christmas story. But I want to do it in a little different way. I want to do it from the standpoint of King Herod. I'm going to tell the Christmas story from King Herod's perspective. So let me get into that costume right now. At the time when Jesus was born, there was a man named Herod who was king. King Herod was not a good guy. In fact, he was a very violent and vicious man. He was wicked. He was evil. So much so that it's been said that he even killed his own family members. He killed his own relatives. What kind of a good man is that? He killed a few of his own sons, and he even murdered his wife. He did not put the hero in Herod. King Herod was a dangerous king. So what did Christmas mean to King Herod? Let's look at Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. It says this, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of, Judah, uh, of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When, king, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Let's stop there. Sometime after Jesus was born, I'm guessing within two years of age, the Bible says that wise men came from the east, most likely from this area called Persia. 
And their goal was to find this child that was born, quote, king of the Jews. They wanted to find this baby that was the new king of the Jews and worship him. Now, what's the problem? Jerusalem already had a king. They already had somebody wearing the crown. And that person was King Herod. Rome had already appointed King Herod as king over the land. So for King Herod to hear that there was another king, that there's somebody else to take over the throne, he felt threatened. Why? Because he was the supreme authority. Nobody could take that from him, especially no baby. It's no wonder then that the birth of Jesus wasn't something for him to celebrate, but rather something he had to put an end to. Look down now to Matthew chapter 2, verse 8. It says this, And he sent them, the wise men, to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Here it tells these wise men to go and find the baby and then report back to him so that he can also go and worship this so-called king. Of course, he has no plans to worship some baby. He was jealous. He was threatened. He didn't want to worship this baby. He wanted to kill this baby. And so he just, all he needed to know was where this baby was located at. So he sent the wise men off to find this baby because he needed directions. And so what happens next? The wise men leave, they go, and they find baby Jesus. Well, verse 11, it says that these wise men brought with them gifts. It says that they went there and they fell down and worshipped him. And that was their visit. Now it was time for them to end that visit and go back to King Herod. But... But verse 12 in the Bible tells us that something happened that, keep them, that kept them from going back to the king. What happened? It says that they had a vision or a dream that King Herod actually wanted to kill baby Jesus. And so instead of going back to the palace, instead of going back to evil King Herod, they went back to their hometown. Well, of course, King Herod was very upset. He was mad. He was angry because he was waiting and waiting and waiting for these wise men to come back to him to report to him where Jesus was so that he could kill baby Jesus. King Herod was mad that these wise men didn't come back. And so he said this in verse 16, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill every baby under the age of two. In verse 16, he ordered that all male children in Bethlehem who were two years and younger be killed. He said, ain't nobody taking my throne. I have the crown. I am the king. Well, fortunately for Jesus, he and his family had already moved to Egypt. And so their lives were spared. But Herod goes on this manhunt to kill Jesus and to make Christmas all about himself. What is the point of me sharing this today? Why did I want to look at Christmas from Herod's point of view? I think it's really easy for us to think of King Herod as this big bad man. It's easy for us to think that he's the bad guy. He's the one that's so wrong. But what I want to suggest to us this morning is that I don't think that we're too different from Herod ourselves when it comes to Christmas. Well, how so? Herod didn't want to celebrate Jesus during that very first Christmas. He wanted it to be all about himself. He didn't care about giving Jesus the praise that he deserved. He didn't care about falling down on his knees and worshiping Jesus. He wanted the glory himself. Essentially, Herod thought to himself, I'm the king. I'm the one with the crown. I'm in charge. I want to do and I'm going to do whatever pleases me. So it is for us. 
if we're not careful this Christmas season. In our heart of hearts, we too say, I am king. I will not fall on my knees to worship another. No one tells me how I'm supposed to live my life. I live for myself. I control my own destiny and I surrender to nobody. If we do that, we become like Herod. We miss the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas, guys, is about one person and one person only. It's about Jesus Christ and his birth. So that one day, as Matthew 121 says, it says that so that he would save us from our sins. That he would save us from our sins. That he would be able to repair the broken relationship between God and man. You see, I think this is the simplest way for me to explain the gospel message to you. First, that God is a big deal. He is the creator of the universe and he created us to worship him. So when we go against God, who is a big deal, well, then our sins, the things that we do wrong, are also a big deal as well. And that creates a big problem. So how do we fight? Or not how do we fight? How do we fix that big deal? How do we fix that great chasm? We actually can't do anything in and of ourselves. We need something else. We need something to to fix us. Only Jesus Christ can fix us. And he did fix us by dying on the cross in our place for our sins and for the sins of the world. If you have a big God and we offend our big God, that's a big problem. We're stuck with this big problem now and there's nothing we can do to fix it ourselves. We need somebody bigger than us to solve that problem. And that person was Jesus Christ. So this Christmas, let's not be like Herod and place ourselves at the center of Christmas, make Christmas all about what we want and our desires, but instead, let's worship Jesus for who he is, the Savior of the world and the King of kings. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for for being Almighty God and Ruler, Sovereign Supreme One. And I pray that during this season, that we will not be like Herod and make Christmas all about ourselves, but that we will look to you, the true meaning, the true originator of Christmas, and give you all the praise and all the glory that you deserve. Thank you so much for each and every one of these students that are tuning in with us this morning, whether at home or in their classrooms here. Pray that you'll continue to watch over us, bless us physically, mentally, spiritually as well. Pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Why don't you guys sing with us right now? All right. Uh, That was a wonderful time of worship, message, and encouragement, reminding us the true reason for this Christmas season is to uh, remind us God's love and our love with each other as well. Well, I have a few announcements because uh, we will be going on Christmas break And after Christmas break on New Year, school will start again on January the 4th, but a little bit differently. We're going to go two weeks of distance learning for everybody. So everybody will learn from home with your Chromebook and computer like you normally do. So be sure you bring everything home, textbook, supplies, everything that you need, okay, before the uh, Christmas break. And then on January the 11th, we have scheduled a COVID testing. And we ask that all students, we highly recommend, strongly recommend, parents and students, I will give you information that you can sign up online and come back on that minimum day. So we change our minimum day to Wednesday to Monday. That allows the lab more time to process the test result before we all safely return on campus. So school will be, uh, you know, we'll start again in person on Tuesday, January the 19th. Monday is a holiday to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. So those are the announcements. And, um, and we just, uh, on behalf of the administration and all the staff, we wish all our families a blessed and safe Christmas season. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful music and the lyrics. 
And thank you for the wonderful message from Pastor Toby that uh, reminding us that, um, you know, God's love during this Christmas season, that we understand your love from your word, and it's important to be in God's family and to follow your will. And uh, may you just bless us in this special Christmas season. Give us a safe time of celebration. And uh, we pray for a good 2021. Lord, use the vaccine, use therapeutics to uh, keep this COVID under control. That will be all safe and well. That we can regain some sense of normalcy in this uh, next new year. So may you just bless us uh, in the coming days. And uh, for we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.